Judge Kavanaugh is one of the finest people that I've ever known. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Judge uh, Brett Kavanaugh is fighting Supreme back. It's the thing that Judge Brett Kavanaugh already. wasn't telling the truth. Judge Brett Kavanaugh, his confirmation would swing the balance of the high court to the right and could lead to a revisiting of such hot button issues as abortion and gay marriage. A woman says the president's U.S. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh assaulted her when she and Kavanaugh were both in high school. The U.S. has just gone through its most contentious Supreme Court nomination in decades. America watched as Brett Kavanaugh ascended to the highest court in the country, despite a serious allegation of sexual assault from his high school days. As the Senate reviewed Kavanaugh's nomination, protesters took to the streets, including this group, dressed as characters from The Handmaid's Tale, a dystopian TV show in which women are oppressed by the state. It was hard for me to breathe and I thought that Brett was accidentally going to kill me. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. The events once again broke open America's political and cultural divides. But they also told another story about the group that backed Kavanaugh's nomination from the beginning, America's religious right a strategic, highly organized minority that has found itself more powerful than ever under President Donald Trump. In this episode of Fault Lines, we go inside the movement to explore its special relationship with the president, as well as the implications for the 2018 midterm elections and beyond. Do you believe in God? I do. None of these allegations are true? Correct. No doubt in your mind? Zero. I'm 100% certain. You swear to God. I swear to God. For many on the Christian right, President Trump's nomination of Brett Kavanaugh was the moment they've been waiting for. It was the culmination of a decades-long strategy to take over the American judiciary. But Democrats were suspicious of Kavanaugh's record especially on abortion and gay rights. The right for women to make their own medical decisions, including the right to an abortion and not a back alley butcher. The right of all Americans to marry who they love. These are our rights. These are our American rights. The president that nominated you has said, I will nominate someone who is anti-choice. And we believe what he said. One of the religious rights' main goals is to reverse Roe v. Wade, the 1973 Supreme Court decision that legalized abortion. But their strategy has evolved to organize against LGBTQ rights as well. As a presidential candidate on live television, Donald Trump promised the religious right a Supreme Court that would advance their agenda. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. That promise sealed the unlikely deal between the religious right and a candidate whose personal scandals would seem to contradict Christian values. All these years later, I'm, I'm, I'm quite ashamed. Rob Schenck is an evangelical minister who spent more than 20 years doing congressional outreach for the religious right. He's recently had a change of heart about their political tactics. The movement I was once a part of was always looking for an obsequious candidate who would do more or less do our bidding. I have been pro-life. I know, what and should I've the law, I know your principle, law. that's a good value, but well, you know, what should be the law? So when I saw uh, Donald Trump in an interview with Chris Matthews, and Matthews specifically asked him, you know, should women who are seeking abortion uh, be punished? Should abortion be punished? And I saw Trump hesitate for a minute, and then reiterate what had been discussed in many a strategy meeting of the past, yeah, probably women probably uh, do have to face some kind of punishment. 
there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. But we were always hunting for the guy who would take our script and read it, who would make the Faustian bargain. The religious right are politicized, religious fundamentalists of a sort. They are Catholic and Protestant and non-denominational. The evangelicals that surround and support Mr. Trump really represent a very small sector of American evangelicalism. Thousands of Christian activists come to Washington, D.C. for the Values Voter Summit every year. It's part political convention, part rally, a laboratory where they hope to convert their beliefs into political action. National polling shows that most Americans support LGBTQ and abortion rights. Even the majority of Christians don't share the views of the religious right. A group that actually sees a fusion between nationality and religion, possibly race and religion, uh, and certainly uh, culture and, and religion. Even though the religious right makes up a minority of Christians, they vote as a bloc, so their political power is disproportionate to their number. There's a common sentiment in the movement that they're under attack by society at large, and that America has moved too far from what they view as its Christian origins. Now is the time where we need to stand up and start pushing back and saying, enough is enough. We want our rights back. We want our liberties back. We want our religious freedoms back. And we don't need to be pushed around by anybody else. Just these last two days, you've had the Secretary of State, the Vice President of the United States, members of Congress all here to, to speak to you. How in the world do you think that the government isn't in your corner? No, no, I think the government is moving in our corner now. Oh, okay. I think since uh, Mr. Trump became president, I think it's been a great direction, in the right direction. Up until then, I think we were going down the rabbit hole of communism, socialism. No, I think President Trump has done what he said he would do. Mm. He's made promises and he's followed through on those promises. I care about our American values and I'm a supporter of President Donald Trump and I love Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. He stands for my values. He came in when all these boring politicians were sipping champagne, the Clintons really, also. And he came in and he stands for our values. He's a Republican, but he's, most of all, he puts his family and he puts patriotism above. He promised them that he would give them everything they wanted, the Supreme Court of their dreams, anti-abortion laws, judges who would do away with Roe v. Wade and marriage equality. And so they took the deal, and now he's given them what they want. Trump and his advisors and his evangelical supporters were very smart, and they had this huge gathering where they got like a thousand religious right leaders and conservative preachers to come to New York to meet with Trump. And this is where this deal was made. So Trump's supposedly the great deal maker. What did he get out of it? The presidency. I mean, white evangelicals voted for him 80, 81 percent, and they really helped put him in there. And they turned people out. They helped overcome last minute objections like that tape where he was talking about, you know, grabbing women. And so he had all these religious figures telling them, this is our guy. Peter Montgomery has monitored the religious right for 20 years to understand the movement's political strategy and key players. Their goal was to take operational control of one of the political parties. And they've effectively done that. You know, they have basically made the Republican Party the religious rights party. If there's any place where the Christian rights vision for America is coming to fruition, it's Tennessee. It's the only state in the country where evangelicals make up the majority, according to the Pew Research Center. And in the last year alone, the state passed at least eight different laws from the religious rights playbook. These bills are often framed as preserving religious freedom, but they can give legal cover for discrimination. And here's how far it can go. Look at this. The owner of this hardware store here in rural Tennessee has placed a big sign on the front door that says no gays allowed right next to a Christian flag sticker. He believes it's his legal right to deny people service based on his Christian beliefs. 
This can happen because there's no federal law protecting the LGBTQ community from discrimination. What are you all doing? Hey, you Mr. Amex? Yeah, I'm I was just going to leave myself and I'm Josh Rushing. I'm with a show called Fault Lines. Yeah. And I was hoping you'd want to talk about the sign, no gays allowed on your door. Yeah, what about it? If you're gay and you live around here, how far do you have to drive to buy a hammer? 25 miles. 25 miles yeah. each way? Each way. And they can have at it because they ain't coming in here if I know it. Because this is my store, my property. It's just like my home. For the sign, is it just about same-sex marriage? Like, could a single gay person come in no. and buy a hammer? I reject them all. You... Even even even, uh, even uh, pedophiles. Which those are two radically different I know, things. But, I reject them anyway. but what does sin have to do? And sin's really specific yeah. to religion, and this sin's really specific to your religion. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with being an American or wanting to buy a hammer in this county? Uh, the freedom of religion the freedom of religious liberty. That's why this country was even established. Despite what anybody says, this country was founded as a Christian nation. Always has been. If a man's having an affair on his wife, can he come in and buy a hammer here? Sure. So that sin... That sin can be forgiven. Okay? Just because a man in his past made mistakes doesn't mean he's unfit to run this country. This country right now is in better shape than it's ever been. In my lifetime, in your lifetime and in his lifetime. It's better than it's ever been. There's no difference between a, homo or a homosexual, a child molester, and a woman that's committed an abortion because she has killed her child. And I think all three of them deserve the same penalty. What's that? Abortion. Uh, they ought to be hung. Why do you think it's Trump's repented. a man of God? He has been chosen by God to run this country. If, if anybody running is against uh, homosexuality and against abortion uh, and for uh, uh, children's rights to live, yeah, I'm going to vote for them. In fact, voters here in Tennessee have elected one of the most conservative state legislatures in the country. Mark Pody is a Republican state senator. So you have businesses right now that have signs that say no gays allowed? I don't know. And that that's allowed in this state? The businesses can say they're not doing business for people who happen to be gay? I've not seen any of those signs. If somebody says that, you know what, they don't want to do business with me because um, I'm a Christian, that's, for whatever reason, you know, that's going to be their option. Um, a, a business is there to make a profit. There's a lot of people trying to change who we are. And I want to go stay with the roots and the principles that, that we were founded on, and I believe that. Wait, when you say change who we are, who was we and who are we? What do you mean by that, change who we are? Okay, the, I believe that we are a Christian nation, and I believe that our roots have come from is the Christian values and religious freedom. Um, and I think that there's people that are at this point and they would love to take the opportunity to take God completely out of the conversation and completely out of um, any public realm. And I am just the opposite. I am just the opposite. I do believe in God and I do believe that my life revolves around my religious belief, who I am, my nation, my country. That is what I stand for. Where do you stand on the separation of church and state? I don't see a separation between church and state. at all. Okay. In my life of who I am, I'm a Christian, whether I am um, sitting and voting on a piece of legislation or whether I'm uh, sitting at, at the beach with my family. Uh, you know, I should be a Christian all the way through. Earlier this year, Pody voted for a bill that requires all public schools in Tennessee to prominently display the phrase, in God we trust. There it is. There in the we are in God we trust. The phrase is the national motto of the U.S., but opponents of the law say displaying it in schools threatens America's tradition of the separation of church and state. But this isn't just Tennessee. This is actually a part of Project Blitz. This legislation is being pushed in states across the country right now. Project Blitz puts out this playbook for state legislatures around the country. There are 20 model bills, and these bills very intentionally are chipping away at religious liberty and religious freedom for all. That's their uh, declared design. 
right? They're also supposed to make, quote, the other side play whack-a-mole, right? Be so busy fighting all these little efforts and creeping, uh, creeping attacks on religious liberty that we'll just lose, basically. Project Blitz is a collection of religious liberties bills written by the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation. It's a national think tank for the religious right, which pushes these bills out to their network of state legislators to be turned into law. Over 30 states, the Congressional Prayer Caucus has existing prayer caucuses that exist to create this Christian America. In the spring of 2018 alone, 74 Project Blitz bills were introduced in at least a dozen states, according to the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation. They build momentum very intentionally towards this goal of making America a Christian nation and imposing their worldview, which is this political discriminatory worldview, on the rest of us. Project Blitz may be a national initiative, but it has a Tennessee connection in Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn. She's a leader in the organization behind the project. I know the left calls me a wing nut or a knuckle-dragging conservative, and you know what? I say, that's all right, bring it on. She's now I running for Senate in one of the country's most closely watched midterm I races. Thought. Thank you all. Both President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence have endorsed Blackburn, traveling to Tennessee multiple times for rallies and fundraising events. America needs a conservative revolution and leaders who are willing to fight in it. Trying to talk to Marsha Blackburn isn't easy. She's actually backed out of two of her four scheduled debates. She shut out the media. We're here in Tennessee and trying to track her down. And we found out she's at a private donor event tonight. So we're on our way there now to see if we can get in and talk to her. Marsha Blackburn has been a favorite of the national religious right for years, in part due to her anti-abortion and anti-LGBTQ positions. Conservative groups have poured millions into her race. Brett Kavanaugh is going to be considered in the Senate Judiciary. He is eminently qualified to be a Supreme Court Justice. Don't you all agree? Yes. Yeah. Let's give her a warm Shelby County welcome. A couple of you have asked me why it is that this race is getting so much attention on the federal level. Let me tell you something. They may think they've got a blue wave going on out there, but when that blue wave gets out here to the Tennessee state line, it is going to run into the great red wall. And that is... When it comes to the religious right support for Trump, the most common question people ask is how do they justify supporting him despite his numerous extramarital affairs, which would seem to violate their Christian values. We did not elect a minister. We elected a president. That's my thoughts on it. He's now admitted that he paid off a porn star and a Playboy model yes, for I affairs I still with his third him. wife. I still support him. All that he did was before he became president of the United States. God can forgive anyone. Mm -hmm. That's my bad mm -hmm. right there. Hey, Congressman Blackburn, can I ask you one question? In a values voter state, are you worried about losing voters because of Trump's scandals? The Values Voter Summit opened in Washington with the midterm elections approaching. Kavanaugh's nomination was still hanging in the balance, so there was a mixture of excitement and tension. Until the Trump administration, no sitting president or vice president had ever spoken here. Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And it's my great, great honor to return to the Values Voter Summit today. But with Mike Pence, who emerged from within the religious right, this felt like a homecoming. Pence is another excellent ally to this community because he's a true believer. 
he comes from this community and he is a white fundamentalist Christian who's been in lockstep with that religious right agenda for his entire career. It's a great honor to be back at the Values Voter Summit with men and women who 45 days from now, I know in my heart of hearts, will deliver another historic victory for the American people when we re-elect Republican majorities in the House and Senate in Washington, D.C. Dan, turn around and smile. Hey, Vice President, you, Vice President, how important is the religious right to the midterms the and 2020? How important are it's a religious right to the midterms in 2020? Thanks, everybody. We're, we're gonna get, we're gonna get, we're gonna get the summit was a revolving door of Republican leadership, a pilgrimage by top party officials to appeal to the base that's evolved into the GOP kingmaker. And if we can hold on to this Senate majority for two more years, we're going to transform the federal judiciary with men and women who believe in this vision of America. Just two years into his term, President Trump has appointed more judges on federal appeals courts than any of his recent predecessors. This is the fastest pace in the history of our country. If you want to have a long time impact, the single most consequential thing we can do is these lifetime appointments of men and women to the court. The goal here is clear. Keep electing Republicans in order to stack local and federal courts with judges who are sympathetic to the religious rights views in the hope that they'll push through laws that may not have popular support. So the impact is going to be huge outside the Supreme Court. You know, if they had eight years of Trump and they got four or 500 federal judges uh, from Trump who like come out of the right wing movement, they could not only get rid of Roe v. Wade and get rid of Obama's health care, they could literally roll back the clock 150 years. This scenario has electrified Americans who don't share the religious rights views. With Republicans controlling all branches of the U.S. government, at times it felt like the opposition's only recourse was public protest and the threat of their voting power in the upcoming November elections. We are going to show up. They want the courts so that they can continue to violate our rights. And we cannot allow that to happen. And we must tell all of our governors and state and local e elected officials that it is their responsibility to protect us on the local level. And if they don't, we will ensure that they are jobless come every election that happens in this country. That is for both sides of the political spectrum, the Kavanaugh confirmation shows the transformation that's possible when one party sweeps to power with a strategy. What the courts do is put in place something that lasts for many generations. There is right now an outsized power that this select group of white Christian nationalists has been successful in creating. And there's no question that having Trump Pence be elected to lead this country has emboldened this, this group. We believe Christine now! The passion of religion moves people in ways that nothing else can. The duty to show up at the poll to vote is not simply a civic duty. It's a spiritual duty, which means it's an act of obedience to God. No rapists on the court! No rapists on the court! The sort of record amount of power that Republicans have in state legislatures, in state houses around the country, their policies are being made. Their supporters are in Congress passing policies they like. Their supporters are in the White House. Their supporters are uh, now helping to run the federal agencies. You know, that's what happens when you win elections, is that you, you get the power. I now invite 
Justice Brett Kavanaugh to come forward and to take the judicial oath.